Hello everyone. Today I want to share Genesis chapter 46. Mm, do you remember that Jacob moved from Canaan to uh, Haran because after he stole birthright of his brother Esau? So he moved from Beersheba to Haran. And then on the way it, but at Bethel, he met God. And then later he moved from Haran to Ganaan, right? And then uh, he stayed in the Shechem. So here, let us think why Jacob moved from Haran to Ganaan again, though he still feared uh, Esau. Uh, the Bible tells that the God told Jacob, return to the land of your kindred. This is the reason why Jacob moved from Haran to Canaan again. Okay, so let us see this part again also. Uh, Jacob was in Shechem and he moved to Bethel. Okay, so here we think about why. God said to Jacob, arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. Make an altar there to the God who appears to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So when he was in Shechem, God told him to move to Bethel. Okay, so uh, when he left from Beersheba, he met God in Bethel. Right, so God commanded him go back better again. Uh, here we learn that Genesis chapter thirty-five and thirty-seven give, was the information that Jacob was in Hebron, and then he moved to the Beersheba. He was in Beersheba, and then he will move to the Goshen. Right, so in this journey. Let us think why he moved like this, although he was very old at the time. He had many family, many position, and he was old, but why he moved here? Of course, we know that he wanted to meet the Joseph, but let us think of one more reason why he moved. Then he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt. For there I will make you into a great nation, and myself will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also bring you up again, and Joseph's hand shall close your eyes. So here, God affirm, God command to Jacob to go to Egypt. Do not fear to go to Egypt, go there. And then God promised that I will make you a great nation, right? And then second part, I will bring you up again from Egypt to Canaan, right? And then the last promise that Joseph's shall, hands shall close your eyes means that Joseph, Joseph will be with him when he died. So without worry, he moved to Goshen. So Jacob moved from Haran to Canaan. And then from Shechem, he moved to Bethel. And then from Hebron through Beersheba, he go to Egypt, especially the Goshen. So in all these through his journey, why did Jacob move? So it tells that that's because God commanded and affirmed him to move his place. So whenever God gave him the sign, he moved like this. So what did God do in Jacob's life? Okay, let us think, what did God do? God was with Jacob and God gave him signs and commands to move when he needed to instruct him. So God is looking at you wherever you are. God knows when and where to move according to his big picture for you. When we decide what, when, why to do something, or our answer should be, that's because God commanded me to do it. So whatever you do, what, why do you do that? What do you do that? When do you do that? We have to pray about it. Lord, what I have to do, when I have to do, why I have to do, ask God. And then like a Jacob, we have to do 
something at God's timing with the God's reason, we have to do it. And then let's just see here, this is Jacob's family. And then when he moved from Hebron through Beersheba to Egypt, uh, from Leah's sons and grandchildren, 33, and from Zilpah, sons and grandchildren, 16, and from Bilhah, sons and grandchildren, seven, and from Rachel, that were 14. So all in all, 70 descendants of Jacob moved together to Egypt. So we can see that from Abraham, Abraham got Isaac when he was age 100. But before that, God promised him that I will make you a great nation. At that time, Abraham had no son, but look this one, how God expand his family in numbers. But this is not in the end, God still working. So this is my imagination. It was not written in the Bible, but I just imagine if I were Jacob, maybe I have, I have, a, I would pray to God sorrow about losing, losing Joseph. And then maybe I pray Jacob, Benjamin's safety when he go to Egypt. And then of course I pray, if I were Jacob, I pray for food to survive during the famine. And then if I were Judah and nine brothers, I would feel guilt, guilty for selling Joseph. Maybe I pray, Lord, please let Benjamin be safe for my father like that. And then maybe I pray, Lord, please prove my innocence. We are not spies, but the prime minister of the Egypt make us a false accusation. So maybe I pray like that. And then if I were Joseph, uh, I, it is my just imagination. Maybe he prayed to go through all the hardship because his life was really tough, right? He was a soldier, a slave. He was in the prison for many years. And now he have a very big responsibility. But if, if I were Joseph, maybe I really missed my family, especially father, because he really loved Joseph. And then maybe I pray how to administrate the Egypt during the famine. <clears throat> so here, maybe these are their individual personal prayer. However, the Bible clearly show us that God had been preparing a bigger picture beyond their expectation. They maybe expected the food or Benjamin safe return, right? But more great things, greater things are prepared here beyond their expectation God had been preparing a bigger picture God secured Joseph's life they never imagined that right they never imagined that Joseph was alive but God secured Joseph's life and second thing is God transformed them I mean about maturity they do not fighting anymore. His brothers are mature and then they want to sacrifice themselves for his siblings. And then his father also uh, surrender everything to God and then he follow God. And then here God show them the miracle during the famine. It is a really big problem. Their big suffering, but during the death suffering crisis, God showed them the Joseph's success and surviving solution during the famine. So all the things beyond their expectation, but God had been preparing a bigger picture for them. So let us recall the covenant between God and Abraham. You remember that? What God promised him. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Abraham, at the time he was Abraham, right? Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And then I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you, I will curse. 
and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This is the first covenant promise between God and Abraham. So from that moment, until they are in this point of life, Joseph finally can meet the Jacob. During all these generations, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God promised and God still doing his best because he is faithful. So God promised Abraham to make his nation great. Throughout three generations, God was faithful to his promise and did amazing things beyond their expectation, right? So though we struggle with our endless ups and downs, we can be calm and peaceful because God is faithful and work amazingly with his uh, bigger picture. So uh, before last time I shared it, but I want to share it once again, this poem, because it really um, tells Joseph's life. And it shows that how God faithfully work though we are in suffering. So, okay, it, this poem really demonstrated how God working and preparing a bigger picture beyond our expectation. I will read it for you. My life is but a weaving between my God and me. I cannot choose the colors he weaved steadily. Oftentimes he weaved sorrow and I in foolish pride forget he sees the upper and I the underside. Not till the loom is silent and the shadows cease to fly, will God unroll the canvas and reveal the reason why. The dark threads are as needful in the weaver's skillful hand as the threads of gold and silver in the pattern he has planned. He knows, he loves, he cares, nothing this truth can dim. He gives the very best to those who leave the choice to him. Let us pray. Lord, thank you very much. Though we go through our hardship, you are with us and that you are still working to make a bigger picture. The Lord, so when we are in downs and we are struggle with our crisis and suffering, let us believe, give us, uh, give us a more stronger faith to trust that you are doing a bigger picture for us beyond our expectation. And then let us trust that you will transform our suffering into our testimony. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.